Hello everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and today we are continuing our panel party and adding to our Pelo Palooza with this tutorial. A mitered flange zippered pillow featuring a panel block. So there's lots of panels out there that we have no idea what to do with. So hopefully you can make use of some of those blocked panels. In this video, we will have instructions for a 14 inch form and a 16 inch pillow form. Uh, for reference, we have made a quick guide for you on our website, www.beyondfabricinc.com. It is a free download and gives you all the cutting instructions and just a quick steps uh, to make this tutorial uh, in both sizes. So the one here is featuring a nine and a half cut size of the panel block. So this stack right here will accommodate that request. So any of these, look how fun. Give you some ideas of what's out there for those music lovers. This is great to make for somebody going off to college when they're majoring in music. Perfect for their dorm. I think I need to make this one for my mom. She loves birds. And over here, these will feature the 11 and a half, which we are doing today, uh, finished um, for a 16 inch form. So these will be cut at 11 and a half. I love this one too. So this gives you an idea. That one. And then the one that we are using today, which has lots of wonderful sayings on it for the holidays. So let's get started with our cutting. Remember, this one is for a 14 inch pillow form. In the video today, we are going to show you with a 16 inch pillow form. So our square before we add our flange will need to be finished at 15 and a half. So we have cut our panel block to 11 and a half. We have our border print for the side, which is cut uh, 11 and a half by two and a half. Our top and bottom border which is 15 and a half by two and a half. We need an invisible zipper at least 14 inches in length. We need two back pieces to be able to put our zipper in. We need one that is two and a half by 15 and a half and one that is 15 and a half by 14 and a half. We have interfaced the back pieces uh, with a mid-weight fusible stabilizer. We need a piece of flannel or batting that is cut 15 and a half by 15 and a half. And then we need our mitered uh, pieces for making our flange. We need eight of them, four for the front and four for the back. And those are gonna be cut 20 inches by two and a half. Let's go ahead and start by putting in our zipper. We are gonna take our back pieces. We are going to put them right sides together and we are going to sew the first two inches. So go ahead and mark the first two inches so we know where we're sewing. So just the first two inches. Using a half inch seam allowance. So we just have that first part sewn and we're going to finger press it open. And then we are going to take our magic tape and we're going to put it right along that top edge. This is an eighth inch basting tape. If you've seen any of our previous videos for pillows with zippers or even tutorials with zippers, this is one of our favorite notions. Take your zipper. This is an invisible zipper. 
You can tell because the coil is on the back, so the teeth are on the back on an invisible zipper. We have went ahead and pressed those teeth over to the side from the back side, so where your tape is. We have pressed this open already. That is an important step. Please make sure to do that. So now when you go to put your zipper in, your pull needs to be on the right side. So we're going to line up the edge of our tape with our pillow and baste it down. And then we need to change our foot to a zipper foot and stitch it in place. So we have put our zipper foot on and we are going to be stitching right next to this coil. You can see where we had sewn up two inches. We are going to start on this side of where we had sewn and you need to back stitch. So we have back stitched on both ends and we are past where we have sewn both sides together. We need to trim any threads and then make sure that the zipper will zip. So our zipper zips, everything is good. Now we need to baste it to the other side. So because we want some quick reference to line everything up, we're going to put some notches in where we where with it zipped up so that we know it meets. So our ends are meeting here. So I'm just going to take and put a little notch right there. And then I'm going to make sure it's lined up. And our ends are lined up down here. And I'm going to put in a notch right there. So now you're going to put your basting tape at the top because we need to unzip the zipper and then these notches are going to match up with the notches on the fabric. We have it lined up and let's go stitch next to the coil. So now we have both sides put in. Everything is stitched down close to the teeth and then you're going to take your pool and we're just going to slide it up past that area where we had sewn because this is actually going to stop our zipper from going any further. So now you have an invisible zipper installed. We need to take this back panel and square it up to 15 and a half by 15 and a half. So remember our width was already 15 and a half, but when we join the two pieces, there is a little bit of wiggle room built in there. So just trim it off from the top portion. So we have our back piece with our beautifully installed invisible zipper in it and it has been squared up to 15 and a half by 15 and a half. And I just want to point out if you would like to limit the amount of fraying right there along where you put your zipper in, you can always serge that edge or zigzag stitch it before you install your zipper. Go ahead and put that over to the side and let's get to working on our block for the middle. So this is our panel block and it has been cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half and we need to add our side borders. So you're going to take the two side borders that are 11 and a half by two and a half, and you're going to attach one to each side using a quarter inch seam allowance. to go press those over to the dark side and then we're going to attach our top and bottom border.
going to press both of those over to the dark side. So we have our panel block that is square to 15 and a half by 15 and a half with our borders on it. You need to take your piece of batting or flannel and we are going to put them on top of each other and put a couple of pins or clips in it and then take this over to the machine and do whatever fun quilting you want to do on this panel. I'm just gonna stitch right along here and then we are going to add our flange to finish off this pillow. So again, keep them sandwiched and then go do any quilting that you would like to do. So now this is the most important step of this project. We do not want dog ears on our pillows they're great on dogs, but not on our pillows. So we want our pillow to look like this and not this. So in order to do that, we're going to take our pieces. You have your front piece and then you have your back piece. We're going to stack them on top of each other. And then you are going to take your fabulous tapered corner pillow template um, and we are going to lay it on our fabric lining up this edge and this edge, and we are cutting this off. So when we go to sew on our flange, we are still coming to a point and pivoting and turning just like we would if we were coming up here and turning. So it's not adding a curve, we are still keeping it at a point. So let's go ahead and taper our corners. Now we have our corners tapered and let's go ahead and add our mitered flange border. To start with, we need to measure a quarter inch from each edge and make a little mark. We have all our corners marked and let's go ahead and start adding those flanged border pieces. To start with, you need to fold your fabric in half, pick one of the sides to start with. You're going to crease it so you find the middle of your fabric. So we see our middle there. You need to do the same thing with your flange piece. So crease, find the middle and then join your middles together and put a clip on it. Then you're going to follow it up, following along with the side and clip. Now you have a quarter inch from the edge. This is where you are going to start. You will back stitch, so all along the edge, and then stop at that quarter inch mark you made at the bottom. Also back stitching. We have stitched it along the edge, stopping a quarter inch and starting a quarter inch from the ends. You're going to repeat this with the other sides.
So now we have the flange added to the front piece. You're going to repeat this process for the back piece as well. And then we are going to show how to actually miter them. So now we have our front panel piece and our back piece finished with our flange added around the sides of it. And now we need to miter them. So you're going to fold it up at a 45 degree angle, joining these two top flange pieces. You need to make sure that the seams you're stacked right on top of each other and that this is also lined up. You're going to grab your ruler and hopefully you have a ruler with a 45 degree line on it. And you're going to line that up with the bottom of your flange piece. Go to the end where you stopped sewing and draw a line. This is going to miter your flange edge. Put some clips on it and repeat this process for all sides of both the front and the back. pieces clipped or pinned and ready to go and stitch on all the lines. So now that we have sewn down from the start to the bottom on our line, we back stitched when we started and stopped. Please remember to back stitch. We're going to trim off the excess with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have trimmed all of your corners down to a quarter of an inch, you're going to take your snips and snip right up to where you stitched on the side of the flange edge. That way we can press this flat and then this will fall over the top of it. Repeat that for all corners. Once everything is clipped, go to the ironing board and press these open and press this up to the flange edge and flat. All right, so we have pressed everything flat and we have pressed these borders up to where our mitered flange is. And look at our beautiful corners. Everything looks good. You need to make sure your zipper is open and we are going to put these on top of each other. Make sure if you have a panel that is directional that it is the way you want it to be viewed and the zipper is on the bottom. So you don't have the zipper on the top of the back of it. So you're going to match up your corners. And then you're going to stitch all the way around using either a 3 8 or half inch seam allowance. We do not want to use a quarter inch. We need a little bit bigger than that. So 3 8 to half inch seam allowance all the way around the edge. So now we have it stitched all the way around the edge and you need to clip your corners. So clip it on an angle right up to your stitch. Do not clip your stitches. 
then through your zipper you left open, you're gonna flip it right side out, and then use your stiletto and poke out your corners. Once you have all corners poked out, you're going to go over to the iron one more time, give that edge a nice press so that it is flat. And that way too, that our border from the back and the front are on top of each other. And then we're going to do one final stitch to make this flange and then put our pillow in it. So now that we have it pressed nice and flat, we're going to come over to the machine and stitch around the edge on the side of our flange. So we are just going an eighth to a quarter inch over, just top stitching, uh, don't go more than a quarter inch over. So we're about an eighth inch over. Trim your threads and put your 16 inch pillow form inside your new pillow. Thank you so much for joining us for another Make It Monday. We hope you enjoyed turning your panel into a flanged pillow. Um, remember you can make either the 14 inch form or the 16 inch form size. The cheat sheet is on our website as a download www.beyondfabricinc.com under flanged mitered pillow. Uh, please continue to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and of course here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe so you get notified every time we do another video. See you next time.